Hey everyone, I want to let you know this podcast today is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial. Just simply go to audibletrial.com forward slash T-S-E. Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Simply go to audibletrial.com forward slash T-S-E. It's from your boy Donald. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a sales professional, or just anyone out there, the idea of having a system or process in place is crucial for your success. Today, we're going to talk to Scott Beatty, who's going to teach us the ideas of how we can leverage system to help our business grow. You're going to love this discussion. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly. The Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And my boy Scott's going to give us some great insight. Scott is an entrepreneur. He's been selling for a while, and he knows a thing or two about helping individuals become very successful by leveraging systems. We're going to capitalize on his knowledge today and implement this stuff towards our sales processes, towards our businesses, or just towards anything that we have in life. The whole idea behind this discussion today is about ways that you can leverage systems for your success. If you're a seller, are there systems that you can put in place to help you to perform better? The ways that you follow up with leads or maybe having better planning. Same thing for an entrepreneur. Maybe you're running a business. You have to go out and prospect. Do you have some systems in place? Do you have people working with you? Or could you have some people work with you to take care of some of the menial tasks? You're going to love it, man. I'm telling you. But before we dive into all the fun stuff, you know I have to give some shout outs. I want to give a huge shout out this week to James Amberster. Thank you so much, James. Josh, I want to give a big shout out to you. Martha, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Martha Garcia, wish you great success in the financial services industry. Darren Truman, thank you for the connection. James Temperley, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Good, sir. Siegel, thank you for the connection. Andre, and also Joseph Murphy, thank you guys so much for connecting with me. If you'd like to get connected with me, you can go ahead and find me like these fine folks on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly. That's how you can find me on LinkedIn. You can also find me on Twitter with the same name, Donald C. Kelly. You can also find me on Instagram with the same name, Donald C. Kelly. On Facebook, we have a Facebook group dedicated for sales pros, entrepreneurs, anyone out there like you and me who are selling. Invite them, invite them, invite them. It's called the Sales Evangelizers. Would love to have you join. We also have the same group on LinkedIn, the Sales Evangelizers. Come check it out, man. You have to, you owe it to yourself. Come be with like-minded sales pros ask questions, build strategic alliances, and just have a good time with fellow podcast listeners who are all about selling and improving. Check it out, the sales evangelizers. I won't take up much more time. We're going to dive into the discussion today with Scott and just start learning. Sit back, get your Evernotes, pens, and paper, and everything you got ready. DJ, can you take us out? Welcome to the show, Scott. Donald, thanks for having me, man. Dude, I'm excited to have you. You are going to, I I know you're going to leverage us with some great intel today. You can give us some great ideas and some great concept because all we, I mean, many times as sellers and many times as entrepreneurs, we don't have systems. And I'm a firm believer in systems, Scott, and I know you're going to leverage, give us some good ideas, things that we can leverage in our own business today. But before we dive into all the fun stuff, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and and what you do, Scott? Yeah, thanks, Donald. So I think One of the biggest things about my life is that Ashley and I will celebrate 18 years of marriage here coming up just in a few weeks. And yes, and that is a uh, an exciting time for us. We got married back in 1998, and we've had quite the ride. I mean, it's just been a fun ride together. I still think she is smoking hot, so that (laughs) you know that helps all the way across. So yeah, but we we're a tandem. We're a team. She is a heroic fourth grade teacher and just does incredible things. From a transformational standpoint in the life of kids. So that's my wife, Ashley. And then we've got three great kids. At the day of this recording, my oldest just turned 15 yesterday. And so we've got two teenagers in the house and we've got one barreling down on it as we speak. And we really have a great time. We have a lot of fun together. And so that's my life here at home. We live in the low country of South Carolina. Some people call it the slow country of South Carolina. And we're okay with that. We live near the water and There's live oak trees, and it's just a beautiful place to live near Hilton Head and Savannah, Georgia, and Beaufort, South Carolina. We're kind of in that triangle right there. And so that's my life at home. And what we do professionally is we actually serve what we call heroic small business owners. And Donald, what we really try to do 
is liberate them from the chaos of working in the minutia and in the details, constantly putting out fires. We want to liberate them from that and really walk them into a mindset of freedom to where they can work on their business instead of spending so much time working in the minutia and the details of their business. And what's really cool about it and why I identified with your podcast and your platform is because as Zig Ziglar says it so well, everybody's a salesperson. And uh, so it doesn't matter what seat you're in, whether it's the business owner seat or the organizational head seat, we're all salespeople. And so what we're going to be talking about today, I think, is going to leverage really nicely across the platform. So true, man. And thank you so much for sharing uh, some of those uh, personal things with us, man. And it sounds like uh, you guys are doing very well. And I'm, I'm excited to hear that. I love connecting with folks who, you know, you just you share with us a little bit more than just the business side, share a personal side. And that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah, thanks. And we'll, we can certainly share more as we go on. Yeah, for real, man. Well, let's talk about this, Scott. Let's dive into it. Leveraging systems and processes to grow your business. I mean, some of the folks listening to this are sellers and they're probably like, Donald, man, come on, man. I don't have my own business. You know, mm-hmm. how can systems help me as a seller? What are some of your thoughts you'd give to the entrepreneurs or salespeople listening? Well, you know, I spent a, a number of years at Pfizer in their sales organization. And there's a lot of really neat, interesting learning lessons out of Pfizer because there are things that Pfizer is and there are things that Pfizer clearly is not. And so as a salesperson at Pfizer, you have very defined territory, very defined boundaries that you can operate in. And some people love that and some people don't. There are some folks who are listening to your podcast, Donald, who are in that kind of gunsling and wild west type of sales, you know, not a whole (laughs) lot of regulation. They're just out there and man, they're just, they're throwing mud and they're killing it. They're doing a great job. And then there are other folks who are listening to your, to your podcast that are, that are more what I'll call kind of a, a starched blue collar. And so what I mean by that is you think about kind of industrial revolution, blue collar manual line work, where let's say somebody was on a, a factory line of an automobile manufacturer. Well, a lot of times you put on right front quarter panels and you put on right front quarter panels and you do that day after day. Very technical. They're really good at what they do. In fact, they may not be as good as you, if you ask them to hop off and start putting on left rear tires because they've gotten so good, so mechanical at what they do. Well, a lot of salespeople within these very well-defined boundaries are kind of like that automobile manufacturer on the line who's putting right front quarter panels on. So I see sales in kind of different aspects in different lives, and yet the fundamental principles underlying are really similar. And that's where it comes back to this idea of what we preach all the time. That's developing a clear vision of ultimately where you want to go. That's kind of your destination. And then from there, building out the vehicle that you want to be able to take you there. Well, the vehicle has multiple parts. You've got the kind of the vehicle as a whole. So when, you know, when I drive down the road, I've got an old Nissan Xterra and uh, I love it. It's a great little ride. It's one of those that you just don't want to explode, but it's someday (laughs) you feel like it might. (laughs) And so when you look at my car, you say, oh, that's a Nissan Xterra. Well, it is, but underneath the hood is an engine. And then within that engine are a series of kind of systems, the cooling system and the internal combustion system and the exhaust system. Well, within each one of those systems is tens, hundreds, or thousands of little processes that go on. So every time we magically flip that switch in our automobile, you've got thousands of systems that are roaring to life coming together. And so whether you're in kind of the gunslinging mode of sales, or if you're in a well-defined territory of sales, you still have a series of systems that are driving what it is that you're doing, whether it be a little bit more haphazard or it be very, very focused. And so that's why I think it's so important to kind of take a step back as a salesperson. And a lot of times we're focused so much on messaging, 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 or techniques and tactics, et cetera. But sometimes it's good to step back and fall into what uh, Cal Newport, an author who wrote a book called Deep Work, fall back into that mindset of deep work where you can really begin to think about, okay, strategically, both near and long-term as it relates to my, as it relates to my vision, ultimately where I want to be, what systems and processes need to be in place in order for me to ramp up my sales to a certain level that if I just kind of kept haphazardly patching or band-aiding things together, I may never get to. Dude, man, that's so true. There, I, I'm even just talking about this. I kept thinking how I did that you know, wild, wild west of kind of sales. And, I, and I, I never, never had those processes, never had those things that implemented it. And so really interesting how you share too, that, you know, even with the car analogy, being able to do something so well that it becomes second nature to us. And, uh, and all of that, there is a process, there is a key, a defined, a simple process 
that if we follow can help us. And I feel, Scott, in my experience working with sellers as well, a reason why a lot of them, you know, fail or, you know, fall out of selling is because they don't know what to do next. They don't have that simple process. They don't have a guidance system. And why do you feel that so many people ignore it? Or, I mean, I, I think my personal reason is because they're just like, you know, I don't, I don't need it. I, I, I don't realize it. Or for you, you've worked a lot with processes. Why do you think so many people ignore processes? So anecdotally, Donald, and, and not just a one-off. I mean, this has been after literally thousands of conversations with small business owners and hundreds of engagements back and forth. And here's what I'm finding. Whether they're sales professionals, whether you're an owner of a business, whether you're a mid-level manager, it doesn't matter. The number one barrier in putting together systems and processes is not that we don't know how to do it. We do think we don't know how to do it, but we really do know how to do it when we sit down and do it. The number one barrier is just the pain of sitting down and doing it. I cannot tell you how many guys I've had sit across from me and they will tell me outright. They're not afraid to tell me, this is horrible. Like, I don't like doing this. And I'll usually respond with a grin and kind words that say something to the effect of, well, welcome to the top 5% of all business owners and sales professionals. What makes you great is not just running out there and doing stuff. What makes you great is taking the time to sit down and develop the backend systems and processes so that you've got a great launching pad full of motivation, full of energy to be able to go out and do what you do best. And in this case, it's selling. And so if you can have these systems and processes in place, A, what it's going to cost you is it's going to cost you time on the front end. But what you're going to yield is time on the back end. And I just learned something, Donald, was at uh, Social Media Marketing World. I actually just got back this yeah, last man, week. Yeah, man, that's awesome. It was unbelievable. And I'll tell you, out of all the social media studs who were there, I mean, I got to meet Guy Kawasaki. I got to meet Pat Flynn. I got to, I got to meet all of them. And it was really remarkable. But the one takeaway for me that really was bigger than anything else is a guy named Rory Vaden, mm-hmm. who is a sales guy. Now, he runs a coaching business, but at the end of the day, he's a sales guy. He wrote a book called Take the Stairs. He's a brilliant public speaker. And he talks about the 30 times principle. And here's basically what he says. And it's more so around delegation. But if you take a five-minute task and 30 times that task, that's about the amount of time it's going to take you to train somebody else to do that one task for you. And so we look at that and go, heck no, I'm not going to take you know, I'm not going to take two and a half hours to train somebody to do a five minute task. <laughs> well, then what he does is he kind of moves the formula and he said, all right, let's take that five minute task and take that task over a period of 250 working days. So now that five minute task is multiplied into 1,250 minutes, which is the equivalent of over 20 hours. So the question then becomes, would you be willing to invest 150 minutes, two and a half hours? to get a yield of over 20 hours in one year? And the answer is, hands down, of course, I would do that. And so from that five-minute task to a 1,250-minute return, I think Rory said was something like 733% return on your time investment. And so for the sales professionals and the sales organizational heads that are listening, are you willing to make an investment that will yield a 733% return on that time investment just to sit down and develop these systems and processes so you can be a better salesperson. Oh man, dude, it makes sense. I would totally do it. I would <laughs> shoot, man. <laughs> Teach. Sign you up, right? <laughs> Sign me up for three. <laughs> That's correct. And you know, let's dive down into nitty gritty of it. Like when you start doing this, because Rory, Rory came on our podcast, we had him back. I can't remember the episode number now. Um, after we finish, I'm sure it'll come back to mind. But we had Rory on the show, and and that's one of the things that I loved about him was you know the concept that he sh- you know he shares with that. But if I'm going to sit down now and start delegating some of these tasks, I mean, salespeople I found, especially in our day and age, they can utilize virtual assistants for very, very, very cheap for some of the tasks that you may not need to do, or even if you're a business owner. And it's not like you're doing anything uh, crazy. It's just like there are folks out there who probably could do some of the research for you that you don't necessarily need to do or some of the social strategies like, you know, posting and things like that, you can outsource some of those things, but you take some time. But if I was to get down and create a process in my business, what's the first thing I should do besides admitting that I need help and that I need to do it? <laughs> Sounds like a 12-step program, doesn't it? Yep, I admit to, it. <laughs> to some extent. I'll tell you the first key thing, and I tell any business owner, sales professional this, hands down, and I'm unwavering on this, is you've got to articulate where you're going. You've got to articulate the destination. I call that a vision story. 
In fact, if you go on my podcast, the Business on Purpose podcast, I think it's around episode 45, somewhere in there. I just flip on the mic and for about 20 minutes, talk about a vision story in grave detail. And so people can really understand this. But a lot of folks, Donald, have heard about a a vision statement. I actually am not a big fan of a vision statement. And here's why. Is you're from West Palm, so you've passed by where I live before. Uh, Have you ever been to Hilton Head Island? I have not. Okay. But you know where it is. So if I told you, hey, Donald, you know, we're going to hop in your car in West Palm. We're going to head up 95 and cut over and head up 95. And then eventually we're going to go to Hilton Head Island. Well, you go, okay. I mean, I, I, you know, I've heard about it. I know it's an island. So that tells me some things. I know it's in South Carolina. So it's probably, you know, temperate climate, et cetera, et cetera. But if instead, Donald, I stop and took some time, just a few more minutes to tell you, hey, we're going to go to a historic island off the seacoast of South Carolina. It's got beautiful temperatures, you know, virtually year round. It can get a little chilly. It's got incredible pirate history, like real time Blackbeard pirate history. It's got a beautiful coastline on the eastern shore of the island. It's got incredible beds of oysters on the west side and a beautiful Calabogie Sound. It's got one of the most world-class golf courses in Harbortown. It's got world-class restaurants. It's got live oak trees with hanging moss and towering pine trees. It's got a north end, a south end inlets. So now I'm going into big time detail. So my guess is you're going to be more compelled to either want to go to that destination or adamantly not want to go to that destination because I've given you detail around it rather than just telling you, hey, we're going to Hilton Head Island. And so for a sales professional to be able to go, you know what? Like, I think there's a misnomer in sales that all salespeople just want to like make more and more and more and more and more money, you know, and no caps, no ceilings, you know, and all these sorts of things. Well, everything comes with a cost. And so you as a sales professional may want to make a quarter of a million dollars this year. You do need to stop and ask yourself at what cost is it going to take for me to get to that point? Because, you know, time just doesn't scale, but there are tools that we can leverage that do scale. So you need to ask yourself in my business, do I want to sell hundred thousand dollars of widgets this year? Do I want to sell $6 million of widgets this year? Whatever. But then to ask yourself at what cost and three, five, seven, 10 years from now, what do I want this business this division to look like when I'm done with it? That's really answering the question of your vision story. And I argue this all the time. And frankly, I believe I'm right. There's not a lot of things in this world I believe I'm right on, but this one thing I do, and that is we can build the fanciest, shiniest systems and processes you can possibly imagine. It's just like building a brand new shiny car. But if you get in it and don't have any idea where you're going, eventually you're going to run out of gas and you're just going to end up in the middle of nowhere. And that's the same way it is for sales professionals. You got to identify where you're going. And then at that point, what you can begin to do is build out the necessary systems and processes. So we can get into some details around that, but I want to stop and ask you, Donald, around the vision story. Any thoughts or questions you want to follow from there? Well, I like the simple fact that the idea you mentioned of the detail and someone mentioned to me the other day, like if you want to get something done, similar to this concept, you have to give them, give them much detail if you want to get it done as quick as possible. If not, give generalization, it's not going to get done as quick as possible because people are going to deviate. So the more detail you can be, not only is it more enticing, but it also makes it a little bit more easy for me to understand and to comprehend and to effectively execute. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And what it does is it tells people around you whether or not they want to get on board. Because again, once I lay out my vision, then you can make a sound decision and no hard feelings. You may go, yeah, I'm just not really into that. Okay, well, at least I've given you clarity because what's worse is if I just tell you, hey, we're going to Hilton Head and we get there and you quietly the whole time go, I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. Not many people do that, by the way. But you get to a point where you go, ah, I feel like I'm in this because I'm obligated to be in this and not because I want to be in this. And so defining that out and then what you can do is you can take that vision and you can take it categorically. What do I want my product to look like in X number of years? What do I want my family to look like in X number of years? A dynamically important question, any business vision is what you want your family to look like in X number of years. Because anything that you do in your business is going to directly affect your family. And so what I tend to ask guests a lot on the podcast is, give me the greatest myth you see in business today. And Donald, I bet half the people I've talked to have told me this myth, quote, it's just business. And it is such a myth because I could come at you, Donald, and I could just berate you. And at the end of the conversation, say, now, Donald, you know, I like you, man. 
that, you know, all that's, that's just business. Well, no, you're going to get in your car, go home, and you'll either be frustrated, ticked off, angry, sad, depressed, whatever, because I've just, you know, I've ridden you in, in under the umbrella of, well, it's just business. Well, it's not. It's all segmented. That's why that's an important question to be able to answer. Dude, I like that, man. That is so great. Didn't you know, it's a simple thing like that you just didn't realize. And that question, I imagine you probably could write a book from all the profound statements you've received. No doubt. So. <laughs> but as we dive deeper into it, I know we're getting ready to wrap up here, uh, probably about 10 more minutes of this. Um, I wish I could keep it for about another 15 <laughs> hours, but <laughs> I know you have systems to implement. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if I, I'm getting that stuff down, I have this vision, have that, you know, some of these things. Uh, what else should I be looking at or should I do when getting ready to do these processes? Yeah. So here's kind of a, here's a template. Here's a map for you that I think will be really helpful is first you articulate your vision story that we talked about earlier, a mission statement, which is really nothing more than your vision story in miniature. And so a mission statement really is a boiled down distilled version of your vision story. In fact, what I have clients do is just highlight keywords within their vision story and then put together a statement that's less than 15 words because you want it to be memorizable. And it's your motto. It's what gets you out of bed in the morning to help drive you to your vision story. And then from there, you take all of those keywords from your vision, your mission, you distill those down and you come up with three, four or five unique core values. I'm not talking about integrity, respect, responsibility. Those are the price of entry to play in the human game. You better have those. I'm talking about something that's completely you and unique to you. So once you've got that, those are your foundational principles. Those are what you work on from here out. Doesn't matter what you're selling. And then you can leverage those. Now, once you get into the systems and processes, one of the things that really helps, Donald, is to be able to first identify the systems that you have, either in your division or in your business, your distributorship, whatever it is that you're running from a sales perspective, be able to identify the systems within that sales channel. Now, in most businesses, sales itself is going to be its own system. And so if you're a small business owner, then you know that sales is a system within your business. Now, some people put sales and marketing together. That's fine. Whatever fits your business is what will work. But if you don't own the business, then you are fundamentally running or within the sales system. So within that system, Donald, it's helpful to go back to our car metaphor and start thinking like an engine. So imagine the sales system is an engine. So you've got to start breaking that systems down into its various parts. For instance, maybe lead conversion, lead follow-up, and database management might be a process within that system. In fact, let's take that process because you asked an earlier question about the ability to leverage virtual assistants. I actually have, we have two virtual assistants. In fact, I just got done meeting with them about an hour and a half ago. One lives in the Philippines and one lives here in the US. And so we're able to leverage them. One of the best ways I've found to leverage them is something that we're going to get a collective eye roll from all the sales pros out there. When I say database management, oh, <laughs> golly. Well, what's been great is I've been able to take all my database management for the most part, I'd say 80% of it, and take that and give it to our virtual assistants who, by God's grace alone, actually enjoy database management. I didn't know there was anybody on this green earth who would actually enjoy database management, but there are. There are people out there who like that. And so, our VA team, they're able to take that. In fact, uh, we've got a side business. It's a, actually a vending business. My buddy, Matt Miller, with School Spirit Vending, and we've got a territory with him. And so it doesn't take a ton of time, but a lot of time it does take is in database management with principal names and PTA adjustments. They move in and they move out. So it constantly needs to be researched. And so that's something that I've just given through Google Docs or Google Sheets, given to our virtual assistant. Here's the most important thing though, Donald, when you outsource these things, Go back to that 30 times principle Rory Vaden talked about. You have got to train, 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 and train. Most breakdown between professional and virtual assistant relationships comes not from the virtual assistant. It comes from the professional who's trying to delegate because they've not taken the time to train. And so basically you could identify within the sales system and say, okay, we've got a database management process that we need to develop. Here's the easiest way to develop that process and then to delegate that process. Two, well, three things you'll need. The first two are kind of 1A or 1B. Uh, 1A is a place where you can actually document the process. For me, it's Google Drive. I do my 90% of my business is run off Google Drive. And so what we'll do is we'll go into a process and I'll literally write it out. Step one, step two, step three, step four, all the way down and document that process. That acts as my training sheet for my virtual assistant and we can go over it. Now, here's the beautiful thing. 
if it's a, and this is going to be no shock to you, you're no stranger to online courses and that whole world. If it is a task that is done on the computer, go get Screencast-O-Matic for free, or you can pay if you've got a Mac for ScreenFlow, or you can pay for Camtasia if you've got a PC. And all you need to do is hit the record button the next time you do it. So it's actually not going to take you any more time to train your VA necessarily, because what you can do is just hit record on your computer, train the process, get on the horn with your VA and say, hey, I've got a video of the whole process. If you have any questions about it, don't call me. Just hit rewind. <laughs> and it's the beauty <laughs> of putting all of this stuff. So we've literally got 35, 40 training videos for our virtual assistant teams on the Google Drive so they can have access to it whenever they have any questions that come up about it. Dude, money. And a screencast hyphen o hyphen matic.com for the first one, right? That's right. Yep. And that's free. And I've actually got a lot of clients using that. I use ScreenFlow because I, I do a lot of editing within it. And uh, it's just a killer platform. You can actually, in ScreenFlow now, you can connect your phone or your iPad to your computer and actually do recordings off of your phone and iPad when you click buttons. So if you're wanting to show people how to use a specific app or a database on their phone or whatever, you can use ScreenFlow. It'll actually record devices now. And ScreenFlow, I mean, you're not breaking a bank with that per month, right? It's actually a one-time $99 charge. It's a no-brainer. But again, it's only for Mac. If you want to do Camtasia, I think it's around $299, but again, one-time charge. So there's nothing monthly there. I think Screencast-O-Matic, if I recall, I think it's like 15 bucks a year. I mean, it is dirt cheap for what you get access to. I think it's free, but that only allows you to video five-minute videos, which by the way, you don't want your tutorials to be a whole lot longer than that. If you've got longer tutorials, then just break them down into five-minute segments and make them different episodes. But that is a really quick, in fact, that's something you can do this afternoon. Once you hear this podcast, you can say, hey, I'm going to go download that. I'm going to pick one item that I can delegate, whatever that might be. Hey, start with database management. (laughs) You can pick that item, go to Screencast-O-Matic and go ahead and record how you do database management. And then uh, there are a lot of virtual assistants in the Philippines who would gladly do that for anywhere between four to eight dollars an hour. And they would be delighted to be able to work for you that way. Awesome, man. Well, this has been great, man. If there's one major takeaway you'd like folks to leave this episode with, Scott, what's that one piece? Biggest thing is to start with your vision story. And I'm just going to keep hammering it and hammering it because, Donald, I've seen so many business owners and salespeople who they've got the slick process, they've got the, the sweet technique, but they have no idea where they're going. And so you could work all, days on the system, all day on the systems and processes, but until you've got your vision story hammered out, they're really not going to, you, you'll be running at a 30 to 40% efficiency rather than an 80 to 100% efficiency. Boom. Love it, man. This is awesome. And if folks out there want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah. Best place is just go to four steps to business And uh, you can actually see the whole thing laid out right there. And uh, sometimes we've got some free goodies up there as well. And sometimes we've got a free call giveaway. We've got mastermind groups that we run and different things. But If you just go there, you'll find out those steps all laid out and you can even just use that as a template. If you've got the motivation, which most salespeople do, use that as a template and begin to build uh, your own systems for yourself. Man, I love it. This I think this episode is like a golden one. And uh, if you're listening to this, I would highly recommend you think about implementing some of these principles Scott shared with us in your business. It will save you time and it will increase your bottom line. I'm telling you, (laughs) um, it, it works like magic once you start getting rid of those processes that you don't need to do. I've done this before, especially my business. And it's amazing what happens when I can focus on money generating activity, things that move the needle and maybe have folks work on things that that would bog down the time and keep me from money generating activity. Mm. But yeah, Scott, man, it's been an honor. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Really appreciate having you. Donald, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for opening the platform and letting us have this discussion. Amen, man. Amen. I told you, man, Scott knows what he's talking about. He's doing some really cool things with his business. And I feel that you can definitely take some of these principles and apply them to your selling career towards your business. Again, it doesn't matter if you're not the entrepreneur, you're not the business owner. It doesn't matter. You can still leverage systems to help you. One way that I leveraged system was I had a process when I was doing software sales. When I came into the office, what was I going to do? I started to recognize that I needed some key indicators, some key things that that are going to be drivers. So I created a document that was able to help me to track my key indicators 
and to help me in my process as I was selling the sales process from finding all the way to demonstration and to closing and onboarding the new client. It is important. Uh, The organization I work with had a very great system with the whole onboarding process, and it was just phenomenal. And again, it just helps the customer to become more of a raving fan even quicker than not having something in place. But I highly recommend it. I love it. All in all, I do these episodes because I really want you to be successful. I'm telling you, these things can help you to become a better performer in your sales, in your job, in your career, in sports, whatever, especially this episode on leveraging system. Scott has some great insights. I highly recommend that you get connected with him and you can do so by going to our website, thesalesevangelist.com forward slash the word episode and the number 315, thesalesevangelist.com forward slash the word episode The number 315, you can get connected with Scott and some of the things that he has to offer there as well. You can also, if you want to improve your selling, I highly recommend that you check out some good sales books. One of the books, again, I'm finishing up is Pitch Anything. Warren Claff, great book. I want to get him on a show. I think I mentioned that before, but it would be awesome to have him on a show. But the book is awesome. It teaches you how you can position yourself when you're negotiating or when you're pitching something to someone. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash TSC, Trial dot com forward slash TSC and get the free audiobook download and then get a 30 day free trial. All in all, again, I want you to be successful. I want you to be happy. But most importantly, I want you to go out and do big things. <laughs>